Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about RPN, which stands for Reverse Polish Notation. Now you may be wondering to yourself, what are you talking about? What is Reverse Polish Notation? Well, to explain that, I'm going to have to explain Infix Notation. So, I'll go ahead and do that. Infix Notation Infix notation is probably what all you are familiar with, which is uh, let's just let's just write down a, ra a random equation in infix notation, a uh, pretty simple one. So let's do five plus, and let's do parenthesis, a uh, double set of parentheses, and two plus eight, close that parentheses, times four, close that parenthesis, and then minus. Um, minus three. There we go. So, um, obviously this looks very familiar, uh, very, you know, very familiar. Probably everyone who's watching this video can solve this really easily. Um, nothing unusual here. So let's actually go ahead and solve this. So, so to solve this, um, obviously you're, we're going to apply the parentheses, we're going to apply these parentheses first. So the innermost parentheses we're going to do and then move on to the outermost. So. 2 plus 8, so we're going to say 5 plus, and 2 plus 8 is 10, and then 10 times 4 minus 3. Okay, so now we're going to apply this set of parentheses. We're going to multiply 10 by 4, so we're going to say 5 plus 40 minus 3. Okay, and so now we're, now we're, we've gotten rid of our parentheses. Now we just go from left to right. So we say 5 plus 40, which is 45. And then we subtract 3, which gives us 42. And so that is our answer. And like I said, um, if you've ever even been to elementary school before, this should seem very intuitive. Um, this, is the, this is the notation that everyone uses. Um, nothing unusual about it. So let's actually rewrite this and solve this using uh, reverse Polish notation instead. So and to do that, we actually have to rewrite the equation a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this in uh, RPN, and we're going to go ahead and solve it. So let's do 5, 2, 8, plus 4 times plus 3 minus. Now you may be looking at this and wondering, what does this mean? Why is it written like this? And you'll see why in a moment. But first I'm going to walk you through how to actually solve this. So you'll notice though that there's no parentheses anymore. And that's one of the upsides of RPN is it, is, it doesn't require parentheses at all. You just um, all you do is just move from left to right, right and apply the operators. So, to solve this in RPN, what we do is we move from left to right, and once we hit an operator, like plus, minus, times, or whatever, it actually applies the operator to the left to most operands. So, uh, let's go ahead and solve this. So, we're going to move from left to right, and once we get to the plus operator, we're going to apply that plus to the two leftmost operands, which is 2 and 8. So, that would be 5, and then 2 plus 8 is 10. And we're going to copy the rest of this down, so 4 times plus 3 minus. Okay, so now let's do that again. Let's move from left to right and do the same thing. So now we've hit the multiplication symbol, and we're going to multiply the two leftmost operands, which is 10 and 4. So that gives us 5, 40, plus 3 minus minus. Okay, then we do that again. So we have the plus operand. Let's apply it to the left, uh, to the two leftmost op operands, which is 45. And then we're going to copy down 3 minus. So now all we have is 45 and 3, and we have the minus symbol, which has, which takes these two leftmost operands, and that's going to give us 42, our answer. And as you can see, we got the same exact answer, but we in a different notation um, by applying operands in a different way. 
I'll go ahead and circle these just to show what we apply and when we apply it. So there, and oh, and there. Oops, that's supposed to be 45 minus 3. Um, but as you can see, we've solved it using, without using parentheses at all. And that's one of the upsides of RPN. And there are actually more upsides, um, just not any that we would use, for, uh, that humans would use, but rather machines would use. So how would this be beneficial to a machine? Well, I'll go ahead and explain this. The way a computer calculates a number, let's just say, let's just do very, something very simple, 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2. So using infix notation, what a computer would do is it would go number left to right and read um, every single um, every single digit or operator that that is put, uh, put in. So the computer sees the computer sees one. Okay, what it's going to do? It's going to take that one and it's going to let's just let's just call this memory. Okay, it's going to go ahead and take that one, store a memory. Okay. So now it sees the plus symbol. And it's like, oh, and it says, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that plus symbol, store it in memory. And then it sees the number two. It's gonna take that two, store it in memory. And then once you once you tell uh, and then now you actually have to tell it you want to operate. Which will basically, once the computer sees that, it'll take it'll take those three numbers out of memory, and it will say one plus two, and then give you the number, or they give you the result, which is three. So, as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, um, four instructions, to, four instructions to go, go through and actually to calculate the number three. Now, let's actually write this in RPN. So, we say one, two, plus. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and use quote unquote use this memory. So the computer reads, reads this from left to right. So we say one, the computer takes that, stores that in memory. The computer takes two, sees two, stores that in memory. The computer sees plus. And what, uh, what plus signifies in RPN is plus is not, only, is not only just the operator, but it also tells the computer to operate as well, to apply it, to apply this whole um, apply this whole equation. And so it takes all these numbers out, all three of them, or sorry, all two of these numbers, one and two, and then adds them together. In that case, it gets us three. So as you can see, instead of using three um, different instructions to put three different operators into memory, we only do two. Now, this may not seem like a big deal. This may not seem like a big deal um, because, you know, obviously algebraic notation is most, most of the times it's more readable than, than the RPN rotation. But it is, RPN is more efficient because instead of using three cycles to uh, do that, you use two cycles. And in simple arithmetic like this, this doesn't matter at all because machines, you know, computers are really efficient. But once you're, if you're doing thousands, millions of calculations every second, that adds up after a while. And you can you can lose you can have calculations take minutes hours longer than they should um, if you're doing really really big calculations. So RPN is actually for the most part more uh, more efficient than infix notation, and that's one of the biggest uses of it. Another use of it is that it's actually more efficient on memory, and I'll actually show you in a moment. But before that, I want to explain two sort of big types of um two big ways RPN is used, uh, use. And I don't think there's really words for these, but I'll just make up words for them. I just call it register RPN and stack RPN. And the, I'm, I'm not sure if these are actually words or not, or like phrases people use, but that's just, that's just what I just call it. So I'm going to actually show you an example of register RPN first. So for register RPN, I actually have this calculator right here called the HP-12C. Now the HP-12C is actually pretty special because 
this thing has barely any memory at all. Like, I'm not even, I don't even remember if this thing even has a kilobyte of memory on it. I cannot recall. Um, but it, it does not have a lot of memory at all. And the designers of it um, knew this. So they designed this calculator to work with RPN, which which works up, um, which the way it works is pretty interesting. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna go ahead and explain how the HP 12C does this. So the HP 12C, this is, this is how an HP 12C would work with register RPN. So the HP 12C right here, this has two registers. Two main registers, really. There's an X register and a Y register. And both these registers can store a number. And I think the highest number this thing can store is like, I think 900, or 9 billion, 990, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think that's the highest number this thing can store. So we have two registers, X and Y. And the thing is, though, there's a difference between these two. The X register, if I turn this on, actually, you'll see that this is the number zero. If I put in a five right here, the number five is actually in the X register right now. The X register is actually visible by um, uh, visible by the operator by me. Um, so I can see the X register, but I cannot see the Y register. The Y register is hidden from my view. And there's this little button right here that says X X Y. What this does is it switches the X and Y register. So right now, X has a five in it. And Y actually has a zero in it right now. You can't see it, but Y does have a zero. So I'm going to go ahead and press this button. And what this button is going to do is it's actually going to switch the X and the Y registers. So I can see the Y register. And as you can see, we have the zero in the Y register. Um, or technically it's a 0, 0.00, but same thing. So that's essentially how the hp 12 c works. There's two registers, an X and Y register. And this is how it does almost all of its arithmetic. So I'm going to go ahead and press CLX to clear the X register. So now it's zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a simple calculation. So I want to say five, three plus, or, you know, in, in, in normal algebraic in VIX notation, we would say five plus three. And I'll go ahead and say, this is RPN. This is in fix. Okay. So, and actually, and to actually uh, enter this into the calculator, what we say is we say five, and then we press the enter button. And what enter does is enter actually copies um, the data from x to y. So now, so now as as I do this, five is both in the x and the y register. So and uh, so now what I want to do is I want to put in the number three. So now what's happening at this point is Five is in the Y register, and three, as we can see on the screen right now, is in the X register. So now we have two numbers, or two numbers in these registers. And in order to actually add them together, we just press the plus button, and we get our result put uh, spit out on the X register, so we can actually see it. Which in this case, it's eight. And this is essentially how all the operations on this calculator work. There is only, there's only two registers that you can work with because this um, calculator is very simple and very restricted. So there's no, um, there are no other registers you can work with besides these, um, with some exceptions. But um, for the most part, you can only use the X and Y registers. And of course, you can do more than just you know addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. You can do um, exponents, reciprocals. Um, a few more that I think are hidden on the on here, like yeah, e to the x power, um, square root of x, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can even you can even actually program this calculator, which I'm surprised by. Um, they can actually write. I think it's like a, like the max is a hundred line programs for this, but you can actually program this calculator to calculate stuff um, just by running a little program. And so that's really the basics of a register RPN. Um, most HP, most H, most HP, if not all HP calculators out there, um, use this. Use R, use register-based R, RPN. And this is actually ideal. Register RPN is ideal for ideal for systems with little 
to no memory. Like, very simple, and um, I wouldn't say this. I wouldn't say this calculator is actually cheap. It's actually quite expensive. But um, yeah, cheap um, calculators with very little memory. So that's the that's the ideal right there uh, for calculators. So what's the other one? The stack based RPN. So we say stack RPN. So, that's register RPM. What about stack RPM? Well, unlike register RPM, stack RPM is for systems with, I, I would say, an okay amount of memory. I mean, it can range from anywhere from okay to a ridiculous amount of memory, but as long as it has a decent amount of memory, it's, it, can, it can run stack-based RPM. And the difference between this is, is instead of um, restricted to two different registers, you are restricted, or sometimes not restricted at all, to a stack. And this stack has, you know, let's, let's just say we have a stack of, I don't know, six, okay? So it has... So this stack has six slots. And um, uh, I mean, th theoretically, um, I'm not sure anyone would have a stack of six. Uh, most stacks nowadays have like thousands of um, slots in them. But let's just say this is a stack of six. So the way this works is if I want to add five and three, um, five, three plus, what we do is we get, we get to five first. And then we, what we do is we throw five into the stack. And so five is now at the bottom of our stack. Next, we get to three. We throw three into our stack, and now it's above five on top of our stack. And now what we do is we come across the addition operator. So what addition does is it takes the two topmost items of our stack, which is three and five, and it takes them out, adds them together, and puts it back into the bottom of the stack. In that case, our result is eight at the bottom of the stack. And we can also do this for bigger equations too. So um, let's get another stack size of six right here. It's a bit uneven, but there we go. So this is another stack size of, size of six. So let's do three, five, six plus seven, eight plus plus. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take three, throw that into the bottom of our stack, five, throw that above there, six. Okay, and now we're going to apply addition. So now we're going to take, we're going to add the top, the topmost items of our stack, and we're going to get six plus five is eleven, eleven in our stack. So now we're going to go ahead and get seven, throw that in our stack, get eight, throw that in our stack. And then come across the addition operator, and we're going to add the top two most items of our stack, which is going to be 15. So now we come across this plus operator, which we're going to add these two items of our stack together, 15 plus 11, which is going to give us 26. And now we're left with two items left on our stack, 26 and 3. And so... Essentially, this is how stack-based RPM works. It's a, it can be a bit more confusing than register uh, RPM because um, register RPM is a lot easier to keep track of because there's only two numbers at a time. Whereas a stack, there can be many, many, many numbers in a stack at a time, and keeping track of it can be very difficult. But stack RPM um, is, is usually what is used in uh, most other applications besides, you know, very cheap in memory and very cheap calculators that don't have much memory on them. But I'll go ahead and actually show you an uh, example of stack-based RPN on my computer. So I'll go ahead and hop on there real quickly. Okay, so I'm on my computer now, and I'm going to go ahead and pull up a program called DC. And what DC is, is it's basically a command line RPN calculator that just so happens to use a stack. 
And if you want to look at more information for DC, it's installed on most Linux systems. Um, it should be available on like every operating system imaginable. It's a very simple program and pretty popular actually. Um, but you can look at the man page if you want more information, but I'm gonna go ahead and just show you this quick example. So if I run DC, um, it doesn't say anything, but I am in DC now. So what I can do is I can actually enter RPN commands or um, actually do calculations. So let's just say I, add, I want to add 45 to the stack. There we go, now 45 is added to the stack. I can't see anything, but that stack is there and 45 has you know just been added to it. If I want to print out the first item on the stack, I can just press P and it'll give me, it'll print out the first item of the stack. And so I can add, let's just say add 57, 43, and 21 to the stack. So if I'm if I for some reason get lost and can't find out how to, you know, what's in the stack and what's not in the stack, I can just print, I can just type in F. And it'll go ahead and print out the contents of all the stack, or the entire stack. So you'll see 21 at the top and 45 is at the bottom with these in the middle. So now, I, now what I can do is I can apply operators to the items in the stack. So uh, let's just say I want to add the first two, multiply the second two, and then subtract the, the last two. So we can just do plus, multiply, minus. And what this will do is it'll add, uh, add two items, multiply two items, subtract two items. I press that, and if I press P to print out the item in the stack, uh, the topmost item in the stack, which should be a result, negative 3603. And of course, I, and of course, if I want to do this all in one line, for example, if I just want to put, if I want to say 45, 57, 43, 21. And I can just say plus times minus. And then if I press enter, you'll see we get the exact same thing. And that's essentially how a stack-based um, how a stack-based RPN works. It just throws items in a stack and essentially just applies whatever operators you give it give to it. It's very simple to use and it's honestly I would say a little bit more efficient than register RPM. Um, and maybe a bit more intuitive in some uh, some degree, but that's essentially how you use a um, stack based RP um, stack based RPN for calculations. And so that's that's essentially all I have to say on um, RPN for the most part. There's obviously um, there's obviously way more to this. For like for example, DC is a way more complicated program than I could show right now, and the HP twelve C is also a very um, a more in depth cal calculator than I covered, but and honestly, they deserve their own separate videos, but that's basically the basics of um, RPN and stacks in general. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys some other time.